Whoa! California Winehouse, Washington Avenue. Watch as a bottle of alcoholic cider suddenly bursts on an employee at a liquor store. As you can see, just by shaking it up, it causes enough pressure to make it explode. And this is what happens when you don't open the lid to relieve pressure, your bottles explode. Look at those stitches on their eyes. It didn't just break, it exploded. I wanted to learn about fermenting beverages for gut health. So, like anyone else, I watched about 500 videos on YouTube. I learned about beer, kombucha, kefir, ginger beer, kvass, switchel. Naturally, I was gonna use a pressure release valve and a plastic bottle for safety. And I assumed that most people would, cause you can just, you know, let off the pressure easy. But what I discovered as I watched more and more videos really shocked me. They'd pull out a couple of these and I knew what was coming next because it happened every single time, over and over. They would use the word explosion. Because you don't want them to explode on you. Because if you don't, then it could explode on you. To make sure the pressure doesn't build up and you don't have a massive explosion. My biggest fear is that a bottle will explode while I'm burping my kombucha. And it literally exploded in the fridge. So it doesn't explode randomly in the middle of the night. If you're afraid of your kombucha bottles exploding. Poor glass bottle, it can explode, and, uh, and it has. If you have too much sugar in there, those bottles could explode. Exploding beer bottles are a real possibility, and they can be quite dangerous. Not only can you lose your beer, but you might even lose an eye. To make sure to burp it once a day, please be careful, guys. Like, put this in an area where it's safe in case it does explode. I won't explode on me today, and it's just, it's just dangerous, and it's really messy, so please be careful. There may be a risk of the bottle to explode. Especially if you use glass and you're afraid of bottle bottles. Now to be fair, a lot of times when they say explosion, what they really mean is eruption. But that still means that they wasted all their time and effort. You go and order a dozen of these bottles, you get your organic fruit, you get your water key for grains and you rehydrate them. You spend all this time in the kitchen doing all this work. And if you're lucky, it just goes down the sink when it erupts. And it'll pop and it might come out like that. <laughs> so I lost some of my precious keeper water, which is sad. <laughs> but sometimes you're not lucky and it shoots right up into the ceiling so now you gotta clean up that whole mess and you lost all your time and effort and money Didn't expect that. Woo! The wife is not going to be happy about that. Shit! I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm But some of the time, the bottle actually explodes. And can you imagine if that one time, put it down in front of your child on the counter, and then But I didn't stop at YouTube. I went on to Facebook, Instagram, X, whatever social platforms, TikTok, and go into those groups like Wild Fermentation on Facebook and type in the word explosion. Here's some examples. Just experienced my first kombucha explosion in my face. I had no idea fermenting could be this dangerous. I sit at this table with my three-month-old. 5 a.m. 
I heard a big boom. Went out to the kitchen. My first kombucha explosion. I had a 32 ounce bottle explode in my kitchen like a Had my first explosion last night. My three-year-old was nearby. Explosion. 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 So we came home and there was like an exploded bottle in the fridge. Like there's glass everywhere. Come to find out it's a kombucha bottle. Remember those damn kombucha bottles that Steph made Oops. that uh, were overcarved? Sunglasses Sa for safety. Safety first. I'm gonna use this towel just in case this blows up in my hand. I just don't understand why everyone's using these bottles. And I mean everyone. I've all the videos I watched, every single time, it's one of these bottles. I don't think it's just bottle pressure. I think it's social pressure. And all roads lead back to one guy. You know the guy I'm talking about. The dude with the mustache. This is the art of fermentation. And I'm Sandor Elix Katz. Sandor Katz. Sandor Katz. Sandor Katz. He's Sandor Katz. Sandor Katz. Sandor Katz. My guest, Sandor Katz, fermentation legend, inspiration of mine. So in 2012, two things happened at the same time. Sander Katz released his book. In fact, my wife has an autographed copy. And the news went wild, talking about BPAs. Which is short for bisphenol A. For years, public campaigns have been waged against plastic containing BPA. But because BPA can hamper brain and organ development in young children, it's been banned in bottles and sippy cups since 2012. The National Institutes of Health warning that BPA could cause, quote, neural and behavioral effects in fetuses, infants, and children at current exposure levels. Where is the FDA? So because of the BPA scare, Sander warned people to not use BPA plastics. And for good reason. By 2012, Canada, the US, Australia, and most of the EU had already started banning BPA products. But here's where it all went sideways. He also lumped in PET bottles into the warning. And that little side note set off a chain reaction that's been shattering glass ever since. Why? Because Sander was citing this guy. It's Dr. Leonard Sachs, thanks for being here, sir. Thanks for inviting me. Leonard Sachs, a very controversial character who is in the news constantly for his staunch views on gender roles and education. Back in 2010, he wrote an opinion piece for the journal Environmental Health Perspectives, where he attempts to scare people by suggesting that some PET bottles contain phthalates, a chemical found in PVC plastic. Virgin PET is a class one food grade plastic. PVC is used for making sewer pipes. And here's the kicker, in the very next issue of the same journal, actual chemists responded. They debunked him completely, pointing out that virgin PET doesn't, and chemically cannot, contain phthalates. But the damage was done, the headline stuck, and Sachs had successfully inserted himself into the plastic panic of the 2010s. Cue the book sales, cue the TV appearances, cue the career. Dr. Sachs, welcome to the show. It's great to have you. Thanks so much for inviting me. Unfortunately, Sander, the guru himself, cites that exact article as his main source in his book. But wait, guess what I found? Here's our boy Sander, out on his commune, in the middle of nowhere, in his beautiful laboratory of fermentation using... What's that? A plastic PET bottle. Maybe I should send Sander a couple of these fancy PET bottles. The truth is that we've been using PET plastic bottles since the 70s. There are over 100 peer-reviewed studies over 50 years, using primary research by actual toxicologists and chemists. Somewhere around 3,000 papers published in actual scientific journals demonstrating it's completely safe as a food-grade plastic. Coca-Cola wouldn't be using it otherwise. Now that I've gotten that off my chest and cleared up a few of the misconceptions, let's talk about the three real concerns with PET plastic bottles. First off, don't heat them up. Think of it like your cell phone. If you avoid putting it into the microwave, you'll be just fine. And if you've ever noticed a plastic flavor or smell from a bottle of water, that means at some point before it got to you, it got heated up, unfortunately. Number two, no long-term storage. A standard pop bottle is only good for a few months. So drink your kombucha before that time and you'll be fine. Although kombucha keeps getting sour the longer it sits, so it really doesn't matter. However, you could use a special PET bottle that is designed for long-term storage. A bit more on that later. Number three, reduce, reuse, and recycle. You know what's even better than recycling your pop bottles? Reusing them. 
it's way cheaper and safer than glass bottles. And there you have it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine options to avoid the dangers of the exploding glass bottle. So even just switching to a pressure release valve would be thousands of times safer than using these bottles. So rather than the burping you do with this, you have this gentle just that lets off the pressure anytime it gets to 35 PSI. So the final product is gonna be at exactly 35 PSI. No surprises. You have four options for pressure release valves. If you like it less carbonated, go down to 17, 35, 65. Now this one's over 100, and you'd only use that with a commercial grade stainless steel cake. But I'm sure there's some of you out there that want it that fizzy. You can start off as simple as 500 milliliters, with your little cheap pressure release valve. Move your way up to one liter, two liters, and then you can see the pop tap kit. Then if you move into here with the professional grade PET plastics, you can use the Oxybar tap kit in four liters or a whopping eight liters of kefir in your fridge. So this glass bottle really has no point of failure. The only point of failure is exploding. The pressure release valve, you get to choose what PSI you want to let the pressure off. Now, if you really want to get technical, get yourself a spunding valve in addition to your pressure release valve, then you can dial in the exact PSI that you want, and then the pressure release valve just becomes a backup. So then you're super duper safe. Now maybe you've seen a few of these around before. Your classic glass growler, well, it turns out, so the same Oxybar tap kit goes onto the Oxybar bottles. It just so happens it fits onto a glass growler. I couldn't believe it. Now I pressure tested this up to 35 PSI, but I don't recommend you do that because I couldn't find any official ratings. So if you're gonna use this, use the 17 PSI pressure release valve. And what comes with the Oxybar kit? Well, you get the head, you get the pressure release valve here, and the snap-ons. So there you go, you snap on your regulator, you get your CO2 control there, and then you've got your flow control tap here. Flow control means that if you have the pressure high, you can dial it down so you get less foam. It works amazing. And then down here is a filter, so whatever's slushing around the bottom of your bottle, you don't have to worry about it. Another great option if you want to reuse your pop bottles is the pop tap kit. You can start off with the heads on here with the pressure release valve. You'd have to buy that separately depending on what you want. And then when you're ready to serve, you switch over to the two tapping heads. Yellow goes for the top there. You still have the flow control and the CO2. And the nice thing about CO2 when you're serving any type of beverage is that you're keeping the oxygen off of your delicate beverage. And you'd be surprised at how much longer your kefir or kombucha is gonna last in your fridge without turning to vinegar right away. Now, if you're drinking a ton of kefir like I do, you don't wanna use these little 16 gram cartridges. It's gonna get expensive after a while. So get yourself a soda stream canister with our little soda stream conversion kit, and then you can be serving tons of kefir. Now maybe you're still leery about plastic after all that talk. Well, no problem. I'm happy to sell you a stainless steel cake. In fact, how about a five liter stainless steel cake? Oh, not enough? I'm delighted to sell you a 10 liter stainless steel cake. Now this one, you still have a slight little bit of contact with plastic, but not very much. And these are all food grade plastics designed for the brewing industry. They're designed to be even heated up. But if you're really hell bent, this is a completely stainless steel tap. The only plastic on it is the handle. There you go. Hook that up to a soda stream and you got five liters of soda kefir in your fridge for the kids. Perfect. Now I really want to emphasize that when you serve your beverages using CO2, rather than opening up the cap and going glug, 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 and all that oxygen gets in there, it's gonna last way longer in the fridge. And personally, when I make kefir, I find it a bit of a pain in the butt to be feeding it every two days. This way, I can make up a four liter batch, stick it in the fridge, and just take as much time as I want to drink it. And please, be careful with these. 